Come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'll be paging through and reviewing Stargrave from Osprey Games. Is this skirmish level science fiction miniature system destined to take you to a galaxy far, far away? Or will it find itself lost in space among the slew of other sci-fi mini systems out there? Well, you're going to find out right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Welcome to the Gaming Gang Spring Fling. That's right. Each and every day of June, there is a new review through the GamingGang.com. Well, today I am going to be reviewing Stargrave. From Osprey Games, it's written by Joseph A. McCullough, with art provided by Hel J. C. Balzer, Sam Lamont, Paolo Puccioni, and Michelle Giorgi. My apologies up front, I am sure I mispronounced at least one person's name there. This 176-page science fiction skirmish rule set is available in hardcover for $35, or you can grab it in PDF over at Drive Through RPG. For $24.50. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here I have Stargrave Science Fiction War Games in the Ravaged Galaxy. Before I jump in, I do want to mention the fine folks over at Osprey Games were kind enough to send along this review copy, but neither I nor anyone else affiliated with the gaming gang has received any other sort of compensation. For me to share my thoughts about this book with you. It's very important that you know that. So let's take a peek at the back of the book. I'm not going to read everything off of here. But I do want to kind of give you a feel for what the setting is. In a galaxy torn apart by the last war. Vast pirate fleets roam from system to system. Robbing, extorting, and rounding up slaves. Any attempt to form any kind of central authority larger than a city-state. Is quickly and brutally crushed. In this dark time, the only way to survive is to stay small and inconspicuous. Amidst this chaos, however, thousands of independent crews manage to carry on their business. Smugglers, relic hunters, freedom fighters, and mercenaries roam the dead stars in small ships, scratching out a living any way they can. Jump on in. So if you are familiar with Joseph A. McCullough's very popular Frostgrave, which is a skirmish level fantasy war game, then you have an idea what you're going to find in Stargrave. I do want to mention that uh, I have never had an opportunity to really sit down and, and dig into Frostgrave, but uh, I did have a, an opportunity to page through somebody's core rule book one time and got to say, it looked pretty interesting. So I am pumped to share what I think of Stargrave with you. So if you're not familiar with Frostgrave or obviously enough Stargrave, this is a skirmish level game. So you don't have hundreds of miniatures on each side. You might have six, eight, 10, 12, but you're not going to have a ton. And what you're going to do is you're going to create your crew. So essentially all you really need are some miniatures, some dice, some terrain, you can use anything you want as terrain. And of course, a table. And they mentioned that uh, two feet by two feet could be used for a two-player game. But you want to have a little more space than that. So we'll have the crew sheet and templates at the back of the book as well. So you're going to assemble a crew. Your crew is going to consist of your captain, your first mate, and the rest of your crew. <laughs> kind of your your soldiers, your grunts, your your mechanics, your, your rogues. And we'll kind of get into that as well. So you're going to start off, you're going to create a captain. And there are a variety of different tropes that you can play. So if, if you want to go in a direction of like Firefly, you certainly can. 
You can channel your best Nathan Fillion if you'd like. Maybe you're looking for somebody more along the lines of a, a Han Solo. You've got a lot of opportunities here with the various different styles for you to choose from. Now, each one of these types of captains do also have some stat modifications. We'll talk about the stats in a moment. And they have some core powers for you to choose from as well. Hey, you know, maybe you, you want to put together a, a slippery Jim Degrees from uh, Harry Harrison's Stainless Steel Rat series. You certainly can. Maybe you want a Jedi. You can create that as well. So there's, there's a lot of wiggle room as far as the types of captains and the types of crews you're going to put together. So there's some information about choosing your powers as well. And we'll get into powers in just a bit. So you're going to have a stat line. All of your figures are going to have a stat line. So we've got movement. That's the number of inches that can be moved over regular terrain. You've got your fight. So that is a bonus that's going to be added to a D20. You've got your shoot. Once again, another bonus that's added to your D20. You've got your armor, which we'll talk about combat and armor comes into play then. You've got will, which uh, is normally utilized as far as like activating your powers or possibly grabbing the loot. Talk about loot as well. Then you got health. So essentially you can think of those as your hit points for your characters. Of course, your captain's going to be the most powerful of the characters. They're going to have a variety of powers as well, and they take a bit more damage. So they're, they're your main character that everything else revolves around. You also have a first mate who is not as awesome as the captain, but they're still pretty good. So they are kind of a, uh, a secondary hero for you to utilize. And then you got the rest of your soldiers, your, your grunts. But there's a lot of different types of soldiers. So as an example, we've got hackers, we've got sentries, medics, code breakers, grenadiers, snipers, pathfinders. So a, a wide variety of different types of soldiers. So they're not necessarily just mooks. But they, they aren't going to, like, gain powers, and they aren't really going to level up as you play. So we've got some rules about uh, using robots, which you can have any of your soldiers be robots. There's just some special rules involving those as well. Temporary crew members. We've got some information about basic equipment as well. We've got some tables with information here. Then we get into the rules. So we talk about setting up the table. So each of the factions, and you can have more than two. And I should point out, there is a free PDF that's available from Osprey Games for you to create solitaire missions for Stargrave. And uh, you can have you know, solitaire missions. You can have two-player missions. You can have multiple factions battling over your game table. What each of the players are going to do when setting up is they're going to have loot that basically are objectives. They are loot tokens that are going to be placed on the table. And these are items that that crew is trying to obtain. Now, there's two kinds of loot. There's digital loot. So you might be trying to download information or download plans or something along those lines. Maybe get some data tapes. And then there's physical loot. So maybe it's it's some special gear that you're you're trying to steal, or maybe it's credits, maybe it's coinage. So you've got two different kinds of loot, and they're a little bit different how you're able to acquire them. So effectively, we break down the turn into initiative. So who's going to go first? And then we have four different phases. We have the captain phase, the first mate phase, the soldier phase, and then the creature phase. So it's possible for you to have kind of a non-player creature or monster or monsters as part of the scenario as well. And there are some, some rules uh, utilizing those also. So essentially what happens is you've got activation. So you're going to, you can activate your captain. Your captain's going to go first. The captain can also do a group activation, which will activate soldiers that are nearby 
your captain, uh, you can take advantage of like teaming up and kind of ganging up on opponents, especially in melee combat. So you do a group activation that way. Essentially, the 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 big mechanic of the game is simply a twenty sided die. So we've got movement. So we already have our movement as part of our stat line. Of course, there is different kind of terrain that will change your movement rate as well. Moving into combat, you automatically stop. Uh, we got some rules about like jumping, falling, swimming. But as you can see, they're, they're not super crunchy. This is a relatively rules light skirmish game. We've got combat. So we've got two kinds of combat. We have physical combat, melee combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat, essentially. And then we have ranged combat. We have shooting. So we have some information about if you've got multiple figures in combat. They're a little tricky. I do recommend that you, you kind of dive into this and pay especially uh, deep attention, I guess I'll say. Pay close attention is the words I guess I'm trying to say to the examples. Because if you have multiple figures in melee combat, some might get bonuses, some might not get bonuses, and it's all based on who's basically whose base is touching which base. So t take a closer look to dive into this to make sure you got a grasp on it. We also have shooting. Both ways, you're going to resolve combat, regardless if it's hand-to-hand -hand or if it's ranged. The attacker is going to roll a 20-sided die. The defender is going to roll a 20-sided die. Each of those figures might have bonuses. They might have penalties that are currently in play that are applied to that D20 roll. Whoever's highest is the victor. So as an example, if somebody's being shot at and they have a higher roll than the attacker, then essentially they've dodged that attack. They, they haven't been hit. We've got some area effect weapons as well. So what happens when you hit is... First of all, you're going to have to have a higher roll than the defender. Then you take the roll of your dice plus your modifiers, whatever, your bonuses, your penalties, and you subtract the armor of the target character from that roll. And whatever's left over, that's the amount of damage that you've dealt to that character. We have critical hits. We have weapon jams. If a... If a character takes more than four points of damage in a single uh, attack, they're stunned. We have wounds. There's, there's poisons, toxins, things like that. But all in all, very, very simple. D20 plus modifiers. High is the victor, is the winner. So we've got powers. We've got different powers. Some of the powers have to be activated and you have to roll a 20-sided die for that as well. Some powers will actually cost health, cost those hit points for, for a character to use as well. So then we have collecting the loot tokens, so information about the two types of loot, as well as the non-player creature actions. We've got a bit of a flow chart as what do the creatures do. The vast majority of the page space in Stargrave is devoted to campaigns and gear and kind of a role-playing aspect to the game. So we've got injury and death. So if a figure is uh, reduced to zero, they're out of action, but you got to roll to see if it's a captain or first mate, you're going to check to see, well, were they killed? Did they survive? Are they, you know, scarred? Have they lost some of their attributes? Permanent injuries, for an example. And then we get a breakdown of some of those permanent injuries. We've got experience level. Counting loot. Talking about the different kinds of loot, different technology. And what you could possibly sell the various different technology for. Remember, your, your crew is trying to score loot 
That is essentially what's going on in most of the scenarios. So just giving you a bunch of different information, kind of fluff, but uh, definitely like this quite a bit. There's a lot going on as far as the campaign game, and I certainly do dig that as well. One thing that I had noticed, and, and maybe I misremember, but when I first took a peek at the Frostgrave rules, and like I said earlier, I didn't have an opportunity to read through them in depth, but I did get a chance to kind of glance through. It didn't seem like there was a lot to it. This seems like we've got quite a bit of info to be utilized. Now, a lot of this info is kind of role-playing styled, which I don't know how much of that is going to translate actually to your game table, but at least it does give you a lot more flavor to the various missions. So we get a section about spending your loot, improving your ship. Then we get into our powers. We've got all these various different powers that your captains and first mates can utilize. Notice that we've got some artwork throughout. It's, there's not a ton of artwork, but the artwork that is in the book I found pretty cool. We get some miniatures as well. We get some photography of various different minis. There are no real, I guess I, guess I want to say that Stargrave is kind of miniatures manufacturer agnostic, but I do know that North Star Miniatures does have a Stargrave line that they're rolling out, and that is mentioned in the book as well. So we've got various different scenarios. So you can just randomly create a scenario if you'd like. So we've got different special rules for some of those as well. And there's a nice variety. There's a nice variety of, of different scenarios for you to have your your crew take part in. I know there is another supplement that is on the horizon for Stargrave. And that is something I'm very happy to see because I do know that Frostgrave has had a good amount of support from Osprey Games. And I really do hope that we see the same for Stargrave as well. And we get a bestiary here. So we're going to see some, some different random encounters, different creatures that can be utilized as far as NPCs. So we've got Sewer Dragons, Tangler, Acentra Bot. I thought this is kind of cool here. You probably can't see it too well, but it looks like this is kind of like a primitive tribe that's, that's battling it out with somebody who's got what appears to be maybe like a, a Gauss rifle or laser rifle. And some explanations of the different attributes that uh, the creatures will have. And then we get our crew sh sheets here as well. And we get some cards that you can, you can print out if you get the PDF that are the different powers. Or you can just photocopy them. I'm not sure if these are available as a separate PDF download or not. And then we have some templates. So we have like uh, grenades, smoke grenades, and flamethrowers. So there's our templates here. And we finish up with a quick reference. So the rules themselves are pretty much covered right here in your quick reference guide. As I mentioned, this is not crunchy at all. This is pretty easy to jump right in and start playing. So there is Stargrave. Let's swing on over to the other camera because I'm going to share some thoughts about the game itself and give this a review score. Well, I think you probably do get the impression that I like Stargrave, and I do. I think this is a nicely presented, rules light skirmish science fiction minis game do like it quite a bit there are a few things about it that i'm kind of curious about in the long run now i have not played this but i have gone through the rules a couple of times and 
I can say I've got a good feel for how this is going to play out on the game table. What I'm kind of curious about is there's some like role playing aspects, or I guess maybe I don't want to say fluff, but there there is some some role playing vibes that I get reading the rules that I don't know are going to necessarily translate to the game table itself. I what I mean to say is there's some things that I don't think really have like a quantifier for you to utilize at the game table yet. They're still pretty interesting as far as reading it and kind of in your mind, building the sort of crew and having a, having a feel for what your crew represents and what they're doing, even though it may not necessarily play out as that on the game table. I think that's my biggest I don't want to say concern, but I, like I said, I am curious to see how that would play out on the game table. Some people might find that these rules are just way too light, that there's not enough to differentiate one figure from another. I mean, I know there are a lot of people out there. They want a lot of crunch to their miniatures games, especially skirmish level, because you have much fewer figures to keep track of on the game table. I don't find that a problem with this. I think, in my opinion, each of the various different soldiers obviously have their own roles, and there's enough to differentiate themselves from each other, especially when you add in all the various different kinds of gear. And, of course, you've got your captains and first mates with their powers as well. I think Stargrave would be a lot of fun to play at the table. It's light. It... It appears to me that it'll play rather quickly. You're not going to get bogged down too far into the weeds when you're playing this as far as, you know, oh my gosh, we got to look up this rule. Hang on, hang on, put everything to a screeching halt. I don't see that happening with Stargrave. And I really do hope to see a lot more coming in the future for this system from Osprey Games. On a scale of one to 10, I certainly do recommend Stargrave. I give it an 8.5 out of 10. Definitely like it, and I am looking forward to checking out more for Stargrave from Osprey Games and Joseph A. McCullough. Once again, this is available just like this. The hardcover is $35. You can grab the PDF at Drive Through RPG for $24.50. All right, that's it for this time out. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ding that bell. Because not only will it let you know when I upload videos such as this review, it also tell you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday through Thursday nights right here on YouTube. As I not only bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news, but a first look at a gaming product on each and every episode. All right, once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and thank you very much for watching. And until next time, good gaming. Oh, you're still here. Well, while you're kicking it, how about subscribing to the Gaming Gang channel or seeing the latest episode of the Gaming Gang Dispatch or finding out what YouTube recommends you check out here at my channel. And of course, don't forget, get your geek on at thegaminggang.com.